Hello everybody, hope you're doing marvellously well. In this episode, we're going to talk about parallel compression and why it is quite wonderful and how you might want to use it in your mixes. Of course, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. You can hit the notification bell and you'll be notified when we do new videos. And if you go to producelikeapro.com, you can sign up for the email list and get a whole bunch of free goodies. Okay, so what inspired this video? I did a video last week talking about loudness on mixes. And what I realized was there is so much misconception in what a loud mix might be. One of the things, of course, is always that belief that everything happens on the master bus. You know, people cramming in a whole bunch of compression, EQ and limiting on their master bus, multiband compressors, all kinds of stuff. And then even the use of multiband compression, et cetera, you know, inside of the mix is still only part of the story. Why do I bring this up? Well, back in ye olden days of recording everything analog, there were so many things along the way that got you these big fat tones. First of all, you were if you had the budget, you were in a very expensive studio using a tube microphone, which was adding all kinds of beautiful harmonics and all kinds of lovely saturation distortion and all of that stuff that we love. Then it was going through a, let's say something like a 1073 mic pre um, or a tube mic pre, and maybe there was a little extra grit in there just a little bit. Then that was being compressed. And frankly, if I open up a lot of old tape sessions, the signals are like a huge blob of energy because not only are they being compressed sometimes multiple times, a couple of times, but then hitting a tape machine and that tape was rounding those transients off. So what you ended up with was this big, fat, beautiful, lovely analog sound that we all love. Now in the lovely world of digital, everything is perfect. And the reality is with that perfect signal is you get all of these exaggerated transients. You don't get that energy that was brought by everything going through tubes and transformers and tape and lots of compression and, you know, all of that beautiful stuff that was adding saturation and et cetera. So there are millions of ways of combating that. Of course, tape emulations, tape simulations, if you like, all kinds of lovely plugins. But one of the easiest possible ways of doing that is to use parallel compression. Let's listen to a track here. I've got a song here called Young and Restless. I've demoed it a couple of times before. Here's the chorus. Check this out. So I wrote this with the band a few years ago, and uh, it was a fun song to do, and it's very dense, very dense. Here is the drum track on its own. It's pretty exciting. You know, there's some reverb. It's actually a Bob Clear mounted gated reverb on the snare there, which you can hear. It's a lot of fun. Um, and it's it's got a lot of energy. However, we could do a little bit more. So here's our drum sub. Everything at the moment is going through this, which is Plugin Alliance SSL channel, and then going through a limiter, a Waves L2. And that's just shaving off the transients quite aggressively, I might add. But we can do a couple of different things. So we could duplicate the whole bus. We can crush it. So why don't we go back and listen to our new bus while applying more compression. Have a listen to this.
What I immediately love about that when I turn the com- threshold full to the right and now suddenly it's grabbing it is that I'm starting to get an exaggerated transient. So what's nice about that is now the kick and snare are poking their heads out a little bit more. So if we play the original one, original bus, and then blend this new one in against it, let's see what we get. There is starting to make a real difference. Try that in the track. Mute it. Back in. So it's quite a simple trick. I'm using exactly the same plugins and I just duplicated the bus. By turning the threshold over here, everything is set standard. I haven't changed anything out of that. All I've done is hit it more aggressively. Now, we could put a different compressor on there. We could even exaggerate it more. Why don't I just mute that for a second? Because that also had an EQ applied to it. And just come in here and grab a very straightforward compressor like the R Comp. And what I like about this, I, I use the Renaissance Waves plugins as my stock plugins. You could do it with a stock plugin as well. But let's have a listen to this. We'll crank the ratio. So I've got the release on the fastest time. And now it's really, really exaggerating the... Compare. So just that standard compressor there with the fastest release time is giving me a little bit more snap, basically like a transient designer. Again, it might give me something that's missing from the main drum mix. Let's blend it back in. I like that. Mute it. In context of the whole track. Now, I have this third parallel bus that I created, and this one is completely over the top. What I did is I chose just to use the kick and the snare only, and then I ran distortion on it. Here I'm using Sansamp, which comes free with Pro Tools, but whatever your DAW is, I'm sure there's some kind of distortion, some kind of saturation you can use. So I'm now trashing the drum bus out. Let's have a listen to that. Then I'm going through the EQ and compressor, strip the SSL, and really, really exaggerating those transients. And then I'm slamming it into a limiter. And it's ugly in a really cool way. Bring those two. Now with the original cleaner drum bus. Turn off those two parallels. It's nice. Without the parallel, it's nice. But bring those two in. Play them all together. 
adjust to taste. So you can really see how much fun you can have. We've had three different types of parallel compression there. We've got the one where it's kind of annihilating it. This is original one here. So it's using exactly the same compression and EQ that we did on our main drum bus, but I'm just hitting it more aggressively. And then uh, there is the just, using it almost just for transients with a stock compressor but it's still clean. So it's just a little bit more attack. It's a little bit more, a little cleaner. And then of course, you've got the absolutely annihilated with saturation version. I mean, it's smashing it. It's got the overload going on in the plugin, but it's just sweet. And this is a 4000E of which we have the real channels down there. Really big fan of this plugin. All together. In the track. Blend the parallels down a little bit so don't overpower the vocals. All together. Wonderful tricks. Parallel compression can be really, really good. You can use it to exaggerate the attacks, and then you can also use it for just energy. And I love distorting parallel buses like that and then blending them back in. Really helps that snare just be really ugly in a really cool way. So vocals very often are something that I like to do some, have some fun with there. So here is the lead vocal in the verse. The thing about love and the thing about peace, the thing about hope and the thing about me is we keep on keeping on when life gets hard. Now all I've got going on there is a, an 1176 emulation. This comes free with Pro Tools. It's frankly doesn't sound anything like an 1176. It doesn't have that crunch. There are better emulations. However, this is like 20 years old. This has been stocked with Pro Tools forever. And it's a it's a stock plugin that many of us reach for just for compression. Now I'm hitting this pretty hard. The thing about love and the thing about peace, the thing about hope and the thing about me. Is we keep on keeping on when life gets hard. I mean, it's a ton of compression on there. Now, if I duplicate this and we want to do something fun, we can do all kinds of parallel schmarallel with this. We could open up something. Why don't we get in there and use something a lot more aggressive? So the impact is again Avid plugin. It's an, as you can tell, it's an SSL emulation. The thing about love and the thing about peace, the thing about hope and the thing about me is we keep on keeping on when life gets hard. So to auto release you strength and you gotta have prime and you gotta keep faith when they're telling you lies. You gotta keep on keeping on when life gets hard. The thing about love and the thing about peace, the thing about hope and the thing about me is we keep on keeping on when life gets... So I'm absolutely annihilating it. Let's put this back with the lead vocal. The thing about love and the thing about peace, Mute it. the thing about hope and the thing about me... Back in. Is we keep on keeping on when life gets hard. Take it out. You gotta have strength and you gotta have pride. It's a really, really simple way of just bringing that vocal forward, pushing it. Now, let's have a listen to it in the track. The thing about love and the thing about 
about peace, the thing about hope, and the thing about me is we keep on keeping on when life gets hard. And to be honest, it starts to feel like a tape recorded vocal that we're used to. You know, it starts to sort of make it feel like it's super upfront and slick sounding. The first time I ever went to a studio, a proper studio, was just mind-blowing for me. I'd never heard anything recorded through quote-unquote compressors. I remember Ashia's playing bass with Don Smith as the engineer, an incredible engineer. And I remember just like hitting a note and it kind of going boom. And I'm like looking around like, what magic is this? The reality was, is it was just going through lots of beautiful equipment. And even though there wasn't a huge amount of compression, there was so much other stuff happening. And we end up looking for all of these different emulations, like I said, like tape emulations and all that kind of stuff. But you could do it with a free plugin. I mean, with Impact is not free, but let's take the 1176 um, and copy it down, the free plugin that comes with it. Let's go to 20 to 1 ratio um, and just annihilate it. The thing about love and the thing about peace, the thing about hope and the thing about me is we keep on keeping on. Blend that back in with the lead. The thing about love and the thing about peace, the thing about hope and the thing about me is we keep on keeping on when life gets hard. Mute it. The thing about love and the thing about peace, the thing about hope and the thing about me. And you might say it's a volume thing. Of course it is. It's adding more volume. So let's bring it down and just see if it fills in. The thing about love and the thing about peace, the thing about hope and the thing Mute about it. me is we keep on keeping on when life gets hard. You gotta have strength and you gotta have... And what I love with that, with that parallel, is it's allowing all those little inflections. And of course, you could, might want to edit out some of the breaths. It might get a bit excessive, but it's not just that. It's like the pa 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 pa. They start to, with no low end in them, they start to like pop out and feel really beautiful. So just try it on as many different things as you want. One of the other things I used to love to do was do it on acoustic guitars to add energy underneath. Now, with quite a few acoustic guitars going on here, listen to this. Believe it or not, that is a Telecaster. That's a Telecaster recorded with a large diaphragm condenser. And I record it specifically to give me that movement. And then just a regular acoustic, small body. Take out those. So those acoustics, those Telecasters, I annihilated them with compression when I was recording them, allowing transients to come through so you get that attack, but you can hear all the body in there where after the compressors grabbed it. Now, listen to the regular recorded compressed acoustics. And they do have those transients there, but not quite so much. So why don't we just group those? Now, you could do this with a transient designer as well. I'll show you that one quickly in a second. But
So there, with the slowest attack time and the fastest release time, it's just starting to let those transients seep through. Now, what could be fun is actually duplicating that. So now the second one. Blend that in with my natural acoustics. Mute it. Have a listen. It's just bringing in that little extra pizzazz. Now, that's never quite as exaggerated, even though that slower attack time allows the attack to go through. But if we really want to have some fun with this, the SPL Transient Designer. Now, there's lots of other people who make transient designs, but this one's pretty amazing. So now listen to what you can do with the acoustic guitar. Now, really going over the top. It's giving us some artifacts. But blend that back in. My point is, in using parallel, you can start adding in more transients. You can really add excitement. You could do the opposite. If you had an acoustic guitar which was super transient and, and you wanted to smooth it all out, instead of just treating that one separately, you can send it to two different auxiliaries, two different subgroups, and treat them massively different than blend them back in. So parallel compression, parallel EQ, parallel transient designs, all kinds of funds can be your friend. So let us know, what do you do in parallel? I'm really excited by this. It's a great subject. And for me, it's like one of the best ways to emulate what I used to love about working entirely in analog, just bringing that energy back into the mix. Have a marvelous time recording and mixing. Look forward to speaking to you all again very, very soon. So long, farewell, Alvida Zen, adios, au revoir, and we'll see you again very soon. <laughs>